In this video, we're going to discuss how to find and fix syntax errors. What a syntax error is, is it is when there's actually a problem with something that you have written. For example, instead of C out, perhaps we have accidentally written C A U T. Um, and so as you can see, it's pretty easy to detect syntax errors as we get these big red squigglies telling us C-A-U-T is undefined if we mouse over it. So error identifier C-A-U-T is undefined. So that lets us know, hey, there's a problem with this section right here. And so we can go ahead and just, oh, okay, we fixed that with C out. An extremely common error that we see, second line, um, is it's very common to forget a semicolon at the end of a line. And so if we change this back to C-A-U-T and leave this as C-O-U-T, then you can see that both of these are now underlined in red. But when we actually mouse over them, it tells us two different errors. So just looking at it, we might think these look the exact same, like what's the problem here? Um, but we mouse over, identifier C-A-U-T is undefined, so it lets us know, oh, okay, C-O-U-T. And so that lets us know that that is now fixed. Now we can see that, oh, well, C-O-U-T, C-O-U-T. So these are both correct. We know that, why, like, why is there this red squiggly? And so if we mouse over this, is it says expected a semicolon. Um, and it's actually, it's relatively common to forget that uh, when it says expected a semicolon, it means on the line above. So up here is where we're actually missing that semicolon. And so once again, these are just these are just some very quick and those are two basic examples of some syntax errors. Um, some other errors that we might see that are also relatively common um, is if we were to create a variable of type int, and let's say that for some reason, we decided that we wanted to try and call it double, just because. Then it will tell us invalid combination of type specifiers. Now, while that's not super helpful, we can see that these are both in blue, and so we know that these are res reserved words or keywords. And so that will help remind us, these red squigglies will help remind us, oh, that's right, there's an issue here. I actually need to call this num1 or multiplier or whatever exactly you need to have your variable named. Um, so there are a number of different kinds of syntax errors that you can run into. Um, if we were to have, if we were to start a comment um, at the end of our file. So start a block comment. So normally this would be ended by doing something like this. But if we were to start a block comment for some reason, and then never actually end the block comment, you'll see that there is another error here, comment unclosed at end of file. And so if we take a look at, let's go ahead and just get rid of this semicolon. Um, so we know that we have a syntax error. We have, and this red line, uh, the red squiggly is actually called IntelliSense. Um, that is what checks through our program and searches for syntax errors. So that's IntelliSense. So we know that IntelliSense, and that, by the way, looks like that. It's the word IntelliSense. Um, and it's letting us know that we've got an error. But let's say, you know, we've got a really big program. We didn't look through. We don't see any of the red squigglies or these little red dots over here on the side. And so we just say, you know what? My program's ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and build it. So when we click build, it says build one failed. And so we, know, we now know, oh, no, there's some sort of error. And so there are a couple different ways to go about finding these errors. One was, as I mentioned, you can look for just these little red dots over on the side, which will tell you, hey, there's a there's a syntax error up right about here. And so you can see this blue line refers to where your cursor is. So you can just mouse your cursor or mouse your cursor or keep up your cursor until it matches up with the red box so that you can see, okay, I'm on the right line. Another way to do this is in the output window, the line above the failed, it will tell you error 
C2146 syntax error, missing semicolon before identifier C out. And double clicking this actually moves our cursor directly to the error and it has a little marker here to let us know exactly where this is. And so that's really useful as well. Um, another tool, and in my opinion the best tool, is we can click View, Error List, and it says Error C2146, Syntax Error Missing, Semicolon Before Identifier C Out, which we saw before, that was also listed on Output, same error as this. But it gives us the specific line number. And right now we don't have line numbers turned on. Um, but so in a case like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, not too hard to count down. And it is possible to turn on line numbers, and I would highly recommend doing so. But double clicking this brings us to this line, and it even right here says, has the IntelliSense from mousing over. Expected a semicolon. And so double clicking either of these brings us to line 8 and tells us exactly what the problem is so that we know, oh, we're missing a semicolon right here. And so now our, our error is fixed. We can build the solution. One succeeded. We go to the error list. There is a warning saying that multiplier is an unreferenced local variable, just meaning that we don't need this variable because we don't ever actually use it, so we'll get rid of it. So we build the solution. Once again, one succeeded, zero errors, zero warnings. So now we're ready to run the program. Hello world, this is a second line. Press any key to continue. We have terminated the program, and we know that we have now returned zero, meaning there were zero errors. We can't see any syntax errors. Um, and so this, in, now we should be pretty much pros at detecting and fixing syntax errors.